spent so long just wandering For years I was adrift Directionless and wayward lost like a swallow I guess you know it's a good morning and the kids are dying to get into the greenhouse. Well, at least one kid. purpose in my life became more clear I found my destination, yeah now where do I go from here? Cause I'm already there I'm already everywhere I'm already there I'm already here Welcome back to the City Stead. I am Josh. That little guy is little Oz out there. He's helping me with some morning chores. I thought, you know, we've been doing a lot of how-tos. We've been doing a lot of tips. Whoa, hold on, I can't get you stable. Showing you a little bit about how to do a few things or how we do a few of the things. I mean, we're not experts by any means, but we're trying to share a little bit of the knowledge we have gathered over the years with you guys. But I thought today maybe we would just do a fun kind of hang out with us all day vlog type of video because it's been a real long time since uh, we just did something cool like that. So that's what you're gonna get today. So as you can see, we're out here doing a little bit of watering in the greenhouse. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, I have never actually used this greenhouse uh, to its fullest potential. So this is the earliest I've been starting seeds. Uh, we're like, we started six weeks before our uh, last frost date, right, in the greenhouse, which I've never done. I've only done like a couple of weeks at max. So this is now when I would normally be starting seeds. But you can see in here, I have seeds all over the place and then I have this whole side over here full of seeds all the way underneath full of seeds we got some tiny tomatoes growing up and then I have this uh, Elliot Coleman inspired shelf full of seed starts also and I actually have a grow room downstairs in the house that also has a lot of trace of seeds and I have another project that might not be out before this video so I don't know if I want to show you yet, but it's also getting full of seeds. So I've started more seeds than I ever have before. This is kind of a big new thing to me. We also grew and overwintered a lot of these vegetables in here. All this stuff pretty much down here has been overwintered. So everything you see over here is overwintered. Pretty crazy. So we're doing a little bit of watering, uh, but since we're using this greenhouse more, I've kind of been thinking about things that would be really helpful and handy to have and one of them would be an obvious sort of watering system. <laughs> uh, we don't have water run out to this point of our yard at all so there's no spigots anywhere to run a hose or anything like that. So I'm thinking my next big project for the summer is going to be setting up some sort of rain barrel dispense system to where I can run a hose in here and use it to actually water all this stuff a little bit easier. But until then we have to do the old uh, water bucket and tiny little watering can method. You can see that's little guy's favorite thing to do. <laughs> and he's so good at it. <laughs> so we recently got our first beehive right here. I've done my first inspection. Everything looks good. I've seen a lot of larvae. I did not find the queen. Uh, I'm still pretty new, so, you know, a little hard to do spot, you know. Uh, but I feel good about it. I did see a lot of other stages and a lot of good things. I've seen the larvae, so we'll be doing another inspection later on. But this is something we just added this year, and so far I'm loving it. This has been something that I've been dreaming about doing for many, many years. And just never really had a good opportunity to get into it or a time to start it. Uh, this year was the, like, the opportune time that it could happen. And then my parents, a huge shout out to them because they actually bought us our first nook of bees. And that's how we got started. One of the other ventures we started taking on this year was vermicomposting. So far, I would say that's pretty successful. The worms seem very happy. I've seen a lot of little babies in there. Uh, so we're almost a month into having worms here, which is pretty fun. Uh, but, you know, not a ton to do with it yet, but it's just another little aspect that we added this year. Are you trying to get water in the bucket? Ah. 
If you are new around here, we haven't really chatted much about it in recent months, uh, but I decided I wanted to have a farm business and being with my work schedule the way it is, for some reason, garlic seemed like the best option. <laughs> like, like all of this garlic, or that garlic, or the stuff back there, or the stuff over there. So I planted around a thousand cloves of garlic. It's a little over. And we're getting close to the time of actually seeing how fruitful we will be with this brand new endeavor. I was inspired by a lot of people when it came to urban farming, like Curtis Stone being one of the major ones. Nature's always right. Those guys, they all do such great stuff. And uh, I really wanted to do it. So I was trying to think of things that would fit into my schedule in my life. And garlic is what came up as the most ideal thing. I do travel for work a lot. Uh, and I just, in general, work a lot of hours. And usually from where we live to where my jobs are, it could be an hour or so. So it's a little bit of uh, a time constraint to try to run like a farm. So garlic was my best bet option as far as time wise not saying it's the easiest I'm just saying as far as time wise it gave me a little bit more leeway with some aspects of farming garlic so that's kind of where the whole idea of a garlic farm was born from if you're not familiar yet with that I am gonna do some updates pretty soon here and we'll probably do a full uh, garlic farm tour uh, hopefully next week I think it will we'll make that happen okay well this guy's making a mess of all that water out there Let's see if we can give you an idea of the garden space out here. It goes all the way back there. We do all sorts of stuff. We got cattle panel trellises. We do raised beds. We do some in-ground bed stuff. We're working on a brand new herb spiral over there. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of this was inspired by other homesteaders I saw before we started our YouTube channel. And then just as I've been doing things and learning more, I just keep building and building and adding on. You can see we built that little greenhouse. That was something I really wanted to do for a long time. And we do a ton of vertical gardening, especially now that we discovered the joys and wonders of cattle panels. Uh, I probably never go back to regular, just regular in-ground gardening. Uh, but they serve a purpose and so does in-ground gardening. So we still, you know, some things don't trellis, so they had to go in ground, but those things are a lifesaver when it comes to space. Better perspective of the whole garden back there. We try to grow a lot of food. And this year, because of things the way they are, I'm actually trying to grow the most food I've ever grown, ever. You should have it filled in in no time. Oh yeah! <laughs> so one of the things we get the most comments about are our little bean tent here. A lot of people like the bean tent, but most people really love, it's hard to get the whole thing in here. This is a great teepee that we built. The wife and I actually went on a little date and picked up all this wood from the, the woods and created this little uh, teepee and we put a little bench in there for the kids some fun it looks a little messy right now i gotta clean it up but this is an awesome thing most people can see it from the road and i get a lot of comments by passerbys just about it inquiring about what it is why we built it and all that stuff so some of the fun stuff we do around here is try to build creative things for the kids to play with so most of our raised beds that we build here we actually do a hookah culture sort of style i won't say it's true hookah culture i call it urban hookah culture and uh, I dig these out, I fill them with yard debris and brush and uh, anything I can muster up in the yard that's just kind of debris, uh, grass clippings, leaves, sticks and branches. If I cut down a tree, if I have one of these going on, I can put stuff in there. If it's not too big, you know, usually it's real easy to maneuver around. I can fit in here and then we fill it back over with dirt. And we find this to be a really successful way of gardening for us and especially using a lot of our yard waste and not having to worry about where it goes afterward. This is a good way to reuse it all. We grow strawberries, we've grown garlic, uh, a lot of things are grown in these different hookah culture beds. The one inside the greenhouse is also a hookah culture bed. In fact, I will link right here to our hookah culture bed and how we built these, how we go about doing it. Pretty easy thing to do and super, super cheap. So most of our yard is lined with black raspberries. Black raspberries are other fruiting bushes. There's a lot of like little elderberry tree, goji berries, rhubarb, blueberries, other raspberries, all sorts of stuff. Anything basically that grows along the fence line is, is basically fruiting. Then we have a little bit of an orchard going on back here. Peach, plum, keats. We actually have a few different mulberry trees on the property. Some black raspberries, or blackberries, <laughs> sorry. 
Uh, we grow a couple Chicago hardy figs. They haven't started popping out of the ground yet because we do have a little bit of cold nights, but every year they have come up and we have gotten a few figs, not a ton yet, but I'm hoping that when we get rid of mulched over good enough and everything figured out with them, that they'll start coming up a little bit earlier and we'll start getting some really good figs on them. Plus I think maturity will help with them also. Got a couple of pawpaw trees that we planted back here. The elusive pawpaw fruit. And we're working on those. Very young trees yet and they take a long time to establish and actually make fruit. So we won't see anything out of those for quite a while yet. So over here, this is the hookah culture strawberry bed. It's gotta be weeded yet. A little bit of time growing up in here also. But this bed has been very productive the past year and I think this year is gonna be really good. We also do some currant bushes over there. Kids really like snacking on those a lot. And this is kind of like an area we did kind of a food forestry type thing. Strawberries, we got fruits. It's behind the uh, grape teepee. And then there's another fruit tree over there. So once they all get established a little bit better, it'll look, look a lot different. This is a juju bee fruit tree in the middle of all those uh, black raspberry vines. And it's only a couple years old, so it hasn't really gotten into blooming yet. Years ago, I learned about these May apples, and for some reason, I thought I really needed a little forest of them. So we have a small May apple patch, eh, just because. That's E. Normally at any point in the time, you find one of these kids out here with me doing something. <laughs> so the next phase of my plan for the garden area, now that we got a lot of planting done, got a lot of stuff done is I want to set up from the corner of that bed over there to this tree, kind of a food forest type area. I can put a couple small trees in here. It's so all I'm gonna do is some dwarf trees because I don't want nothing too big like this guy. It'll take up all the shade, right? And shade the rest of the garden out. So this area back here is probably gonna be my next project. I'm trying to figure out what I can do here, what I can plant here. I did have a plan in place because we used to have a lot of shade right here because there was a big tree in the back corner where the fences all meet. And uh, last year it fell down during a storm. So now it's a lot of sun. So I gotta, gotta rethink what I was gonna plant back there and how I'm gonna do it. But I think that's the next phase. Just trying to figure out what to do with that after we plant out the garden. So probably all summer, we probably won't get much in there this year, but afterward, probably start planting a lot more in there next year. Hopefully a lot of perennials, stuff like that I don't have to worry about plant and leave and you know enjoy year after year after year. Nom, nom. Mama, Ta -da. Da -da. What, buddy? Yeah. Ooh, well, it's about dinner time. So I'm gonna go pick some salad out of our greenhouse. Cause this is really the only lettuce that's super good. It's ready yet. We got some freckled lettuce, some regular lettuce, some Swiss chard, we got some spinach, and we got some kale. Kind of just mix it all together and it makes a really good salad. Happy to have the greens that survived in here, but I'm gonna shut up, pick me some greens so I can get inside and uh, get the salad made.
Not too bad right there, a bunch of greens. So we didn't have any really fresh vegetables to add to it, but we can only do what we can do, right? And this early in the year, we're lucky to even have this. <laughs> Mr. Man made it outside. All right, let's see if we can do it. Diva just color changed it already. Ta-da! I know, I'm magic. Daddy. Magic! All right, I gotta go make dinner. So something I just started playing with last year was actually growing stuff in the front yard too. So I actually went through and planted this all and it's mostly just greens, a little bit of flowers and a couple like peppers and eggplants that I threw in there just to see how they'll do. Last year we grew greens and we started in July and we actually harvest them really late in the year. So I got a lot of promise for growing at least salad greens right here out our front door. Usually on these cooler nights like tonight, I like to close the greenhouse up a little bit earlier. I would wait to dark, but I'm gonna close it now while it's still got a little bit of warmth in it. And hopefully we can retain a little bit of heat in here more than if we just let it, left it wide open. So this vlog turned out to be more of a, let me show you around the city set type of video. <laughs> sort of a mini tour of what we have going on from me you know, the head gardener, head creator here at the City Stead. I am a husband, a father, a gardener, homesteader, one day, hopefully, farmer, if that garlic takes off. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's a little bit of the City Stead and what you can see around here and what we got going on. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you'll stick around for more if you're not already here. Uh, and if you are here, hopefully you uh, are looking forward to seeing more of all this stuff we got going on as we continue to build and add and add and add and just keep creating more and awesome stuff here on our, our little city lot here. All right, remember guys, be bold and grow bold. And as always, I will see you in the very next video.